with one voice oh, we will sing every tribe and every tongue brings up harmony with one voice oh, we will bring heaven's beautiful melodies down to this earth as we Go ahead and give the Lord a hand clap of praise on your way down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was glad when he said on to me. Ah, let us go to the house of the Lord. Our feet shall stand in thy gate, O Jerusalem. Are you excited to be in the house of the Lord today? Because God knows that I am. Oh, hallelujah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, how good and pleasant it is to dwell together again with my brothers and sisters in unity. Good morning, fam. Good morning. I said, good morning, fam. Good morning. It's good to see you, beloved, because y'all look so good out there. Amen. Y'all look so wonderful. Uh, so y'all know that God has been keeping me in the book of Daniel. We preached through Daniel chapter 1, chapter 2, and chapter 3. So today I'm going to introduce you to Daniel chapter 4. Is that all right? Amen. Yes, 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 yes. Today's message is entitled, Our Praise, His Passion. Our Praise, His Passion. So I need you to understand that God had a passion for us before he formed us from the dust of the ground. Or created you from the rib of man, he loved you. He had a thing for you. It's like that old song that me and Mrs. Jones got a thing going on. Yeah. God got a thing for you. Yes, yes, yes. When I think about the goodness and the grace of my Lord, my God, I wonder what kind of love is this? And who am I to be the recipient of this love? Because God knows I deserve that. We deserve death. Because the Bible says that the wages of sin is, come on somebody, somebody read their Bible in here. The wages of sin is, ah, oh, yes, 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 but the gift of God. Come on somebody, yes, yes, yes. Ah, yes it is. So as I continue to look at the book of Daniel, specifically chapter 4, this is a unique chapter. It is the testimony of a Gentile king and how God changed his heart. See, Nebuchadnezzar is a good example of a witness of the divine power and glory of God. He was at a place to where he was contemplating the greatness of God and his sovereignty. I like to refer it to as that he was coming to himself. That's right. Yeah, yeah. He was coming to himself. Hmm. Have you ever been there? Have you ever been to that place to where you realize that God is all-knowing, all-powerful, he's omnipresent, omnipotent, and omniscient, and when you got this revelation, it just simply blew your mind. Yeah, 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 yeah. I like to believe that this is the journey that King Nebuchadnezzar was on his way to discovery. Because, see, King Nebuchadnezzar was a gracious man. He was a gracious man. And the problem with graceless men is that they don't run to God until everything else failed them. Because they think it's all about them. And it's about what they can do. They don't run to God to everything else fail them to after they have wrecked their marriage and lost their job and lost their home and lost their finances. Then they want to run to God because That's everything right. else is there. There's no other place for them to go. That's true. Ah, yes, 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 yes. They wait till they have nothing left. Then they run to God. And usually it might seem like it's too late for them, but it's never too late for God. Amen? 
Yes, yes, yes. Understand that the words of this chapter are recorded from the lips of Nebuchadnezzar after all the events had occurred. See, he was warned about his pride. But he didn't deal with it. And got judged. You know they say that pride is the devil's sin. Well, come on, somebody. Pride is the devil's sin. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. He didn't deal with it, so God dealt with him. And after he'd been restored to his throne, he wanted to give glory to God by making this strange story known to all. So that, so as this intriguing tale of the fall and rise of this Gentile king becomes to unfold itself before our very eyes in Daniel chapter 4, with the hope that we may take heed to the lesson that was taught here and apply its fruitfulness to our lives to avoid such pitfalls and traps, we're going to begin to explore the first three verses and see what simple truths that we are able to glean out of this greeting. So if you will open your Bibles to Daniel chapter 4, verses 1 through 3. Let's honor the Lord this morning. Let's please stand with me if you can. Daniel chapter 4, <coughs> verses 1 through 3. And this is the greeting. And the Bible says, King Nebuchadnezzar to all peoples, nations, and lands that dwell in all the earth, peace be multiplied to you. It has seemed good to me to show the signs and wonders that the Most High God has done for me. How great are his signs, how mighty his wonders. His kingdom is everlasting kingdom, and his dominion endures from generation to generation. That's pray. Oh, Heavenly Father, I thank you right now, Father, for using me as your messenger and minister of the gospel this morning. Father, as we pull our chairs up to your table and you begin to break the bread of life and begin to feed us your flock, I ask that you hide me behind your cross, O oh God. Let your forever living word consume us, Lord, just as the spirit of the Holy Ghost consumed the apostles in the upper room. Decrease, advance, and increase in you, Lord, so that transformation of the heart can take place. Speak this morning. Let those that have an ear to hear, let them hear what your spirit is saying to us. I ask that you remove the scales from the eyes of those that's been blinded for you for quite some time, Lord. Let them see you and your glory today, O oh God. Father, we acknowledge that you are the one and true living God who we willingly and humbly serve. The only one that can speak to all of us at the same time and say something different to each and every one of us. God, because you're great like that. So, mighty God, take control of this house. Have your way in this place. Mm, let every heart be open and ready, and every mind be clear and steady as we get ready to receive the uncorruptible, the undeniable, the unerasable word of God. And we will be careful to always give you all the honor and glory in the majestic name of Jesus. Amen. Go ahead and give the Lord a hand clap of praise on the way down. Yes, 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 yes. So I promise you, I won't before you. I heard someone say, I won't, before, I won't be before you long, but I'll be before you strong. <laughs> Amen. Nebuchadnezzar, after being humbled and mortified, sent out this declaration to all peoples and nations and languages that live on all the earth. So this wasn't just about the people in his kingdom, the subjects in his kingdom. This is for all the people, those that was there then and those that are to come that they might hear this account of his own issues that he dealt with about sin. So this Gentile king was willing to open himself up concerning his deep issues of sin. Now he didn't want to do this for public display or so the herald of that day could stand in the city square and write recite his shortcomings just to be doing something. No, 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 no. Because in those days, kings was his closest thing to a god that they would ever see. But he was moved, he had the unction by God. To, he gave strictly charges and commands that all manner of persons are to take notice of his issues of sin, that they may benefit, adhere to it, and learn from it. So the first thing I was able to glean out of this text is this. The enemy wants you to remain silent about what God is doing in your life. The enemy wants you to remain silent about what God is doing in your life. 
As long as you're not sharing your testimony or telling someone about the blessings of the Lord in your life or sharing the story about Jesus and how we love him and how he loves them, you are no threat to the enemy. Why? Because you're not doing anything to expand the kingdom. And the enemy does not want the kingdom of God to be expanded. But in order for the kingdom of God to be expanded, you got to allow God to use you and open your mouth. And open your mouth and begin to speak about the greatness of this king that we serve. So you're no threat to him. If you're wondering why things have been so rosy and good and everything is great with no struggles or trials in your life, it's because you're not doing anything for the kingdom. Because I, I tell you as a standing testimony, when you start working for God, when you start doing things for the, for the kingdom, the enemy is going to stand up and take notice. He's going to send his little hips after you. And they're going to try to set traps and snares to stop you from doing what God has called you to do. Are y'all hearing me this morning? Amen. See, God did not save you for you to be quiet, safe, and non-disruptive. He saves you to use his, to be, to be deadly with his words of hope, to be lethal with his weapon of love, to be disruptive with the power of encouragement, to change your circumstances with the persistence of prayer, with the persistence of prayer, so you may proclaim the things that he has shown you and be a witness to the things that he's doing in your life, through your life, and to your life. Oh, y'all missed the praise moment right there. Everybody in this place is stop Because God is always moving in your life. Look what he tells Saul, who would become Paul, in Acts chapter 26, verse 16. He said, but rise and stand up on your feet. For I have appeared to you this purpose, to appoint you as a servant and a witness to the things in which you have seen me and to those in which I will appear to you. Oh, glory be to God. Uh, like Paul and Nebuchadnezzar, we need to proclaim to all what God is doing and how he is moving in our lives with the hope that they may benefit from it, be strengthened, and to the law so that they may come to know the saving grace of Jesus Christ. Yeah. But as long as you're silent, the enemy's got you right where he wants you. As long as you're not serving, as long as you're not praying, as long as you're not doing the things that we should be doing in the kingdom, the enemy's got you right where he wants you. You're no threat to him. Mm. Nebuchadnezzar goes on to write in verse 2. He said, it has seemed good for him to show the signs and wonders of the high God and what he has done for him. Which leads me to the next thing I was able to gleam out of this Greek is that we need to acknowledge the power of God in our life. We need to acknowledge the power of God in our life. Look, I know. Look at your name and say, I know. I know. I know that God is still in the miracle business. He is still in the miracle business. He is still changing lives. He is still taking nothing and making something. But see, I am under the proclivity to believe that we don't give enough praise reports about how God is moving. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, 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 yeah. See, we're fast on the trigger to say what we need him to do. And once he does it, we get amnesia and we move on to the next thing we need. Oh, y'all, I like y'all ain't hearing me this morning. Y'all know I'm right about it. We got a short time memory when it comes to the blessings of God. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We move on to the next thing we need him to do. But I just need two or three of y'all to look to your left and look to your right and say, God is still doing wonders. God is still doing wonders. Yeah, 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 yeah. I know that he's still making the impossible possible. He is still calling wayward children home that you thought was lost forever. He is still delivering prostitutes and drug addicts that the world has left for dead and setting them up to become CEOs and business owners. He's still mending relationships that were shredded by the enemy. He's still destroying bondage of depression and anxiety and worry so that you may be set free. He is still sending groceries when you didn't even know where your next meal was coming from. He is still anointing 
rescue minds that don't have a college education to get jobs that the world say they're not qualified for. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, and guess what? He's still in the blessing business. Yeah, yeah. He's still blessing folks with homes when their credit report says, are you serious? Yeah, 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 yeah. He's still breaking generational curses and saying, no, not today, Satan. Oh, yes, he is. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Y'all ain't talking back to me. We have to declare the signs and the wonders of the Lord. No matter how big or how small, the world needs to know, the lost need to know that the power of God is still moving, is still active in our life. How can they know if they don't hear it? And who wants to attach themselves to something that has no power? You're right. There's got to be power in this kingdom. There's got to be the power of God in your life. Nobody wants to attach themselves to something that has no power. You might as well just stay in the world. Come on. See, the world gives us a false sense of power. Oh, I hope you got some steel toe shoes on this morning. The world gives us a false sense of power. You got to look this way. You got to live on this side of the tracks. You got to drive this kind of way. You got to live in this kind of house. You got to have this money in your bank account. Oh, I came here to tell somebody, oh, that is a lie from the enemy. There's no power in that. When is the last time you see a brake truck behind a hearse? You can't take it with you. Oh, y'all know I'm right about it. You can't take it with you. You can tell someone, hey, I need, to, I need you to pick up my house and move it to heaven. <laughs> Ain't happening, Captain. You can't take it with you. Power is in prayer. Yeah. Power is on your knees. Power is serving up. Power is demonstrating love even when folks are hard to love. Come on, somebody. Amen. Power is leading your family in the way God has called you to lead them. Oh, y'all know what I'm right about. Yes. That's true power. Power is changing the influence of a generation. Yes. That's power. My God, my God, my God, you better get this thing down in your belly. Mm. We have to get them to understand that we are citizens of another kingdom. And we have to invite them to be part of that kingdom. Because the kingdom that we serve, oh my God, the kingdom that we call to serve has a purpose and it has no end. It has no end. We're going to get it, got it, and be gone. The final thing. I was able to glean out this greeting this morning is this. God's kingdom is great. Man's kingdom. God's kingdom is great. The man's kingdom. Verse 3 says, his kingdom is everlasting. And it has its authority endures forever from generation to generation. Dominion, authority, depends on which translation you read. But that's good right there. That's good, right? That's good, that's good, that's good. Don't you know that the kingdom isn't going anywhere? It's here for eternity. It's here for eternity. Can we go a little bit deeper? Let's dig a little bit deeper. If it's here for eternity, then he has the necessary resources to sustain us for eternity, no matter what. No matter what, he's got what we need. In other words, if God is the ultimate source, then he has unlimited resources for us. His supply to meet our need is limitless, and he can't run out of provisions for you. That's right. Yes. The old church say, you can't outgive God. Yes. You can't outgive God. He's got unlimited resources for you and for me. Uh, what are you saying, Pastor Vance? This is what I'm saying. There is never going to be a shortage of his passion for you when men get bored with you. When men get bored with you, God gets excited about you. There's not going to be a shortage of passion for them. There's never going to be a point to where he stops loving you when men will try to trade you in for a new amount. Oh, you know I'm right about. 
Yeah, 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 yeah. There, there's not going to be a shortage of protection for you when men to look towards self-preservation. When they say, I got to get mine. God says, I got yours for you. Amen. Yeah, 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 yeah. He is never going to run out of provisions for you when men starts to lay his up in a storehouse and becomes a reservoir instead of a knife. Because it's supposed to flow through you. Come on, somebody. It's supposed to flow through you to someone else. You better get this thing because this will bless you. Nine out of ten things that God allow us to have or allow us to get is for somebody else. Wisdom. He gives through you for someone else. Amen. Things we go through, trials, tribulations, is for someone else. Yes. It's to pour into that person that's coming after you. Yes. And God rewards that. Are you hearing me today? Right. We have got to get out of this this, this culture that say, it's all about me and my house. Oh, yeah. yeah, it should be about you and your house. You and your house serving the Lord. That's what it should be about. But we have created a culture of isolation. Maybe let me try this side. We have created a culture of isolation right. where we're just concerned about what's in our inner circle. It doesn't matter what's going on with our neighbors over here yeah. or the folk across the street. As long as it not attached itself to my house, I'm good with it. Are you hearing me? Yes. Are y'all hearing me? Yes. It's a culture of isolation. Well, we just keep little Johnny in a room playing video games for nine hours a day. That's right. Then he ends up having no social skills, making bombs in the backyard, in the garage. Y'all know I'm right about it. And I didn't see it. The teacher tried to tell you, yeah, there's something going on with them. And you said, you better not say that to my child. Come on, really? Yes. I, I like y'all know what I'm talking about. It's going on. It's going on. And we see the results of that. Oh, but that's for a whole other sermon. We're going to come back to that. Glory be to God. Mm. Mm. He won't run out of provisions for you. Yes, 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 because my Bible says my God will supply every need of you according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. Not some of his needs, not part of your needs, but all your needs. He will supply all your needs emotionally, relationship. Oh, he, glory be to God. He told the disciples, don't take anything, just go. Don't worry about food or clothing. Just go. I got you. All your needs. Hmm. He goes on to say, though, in verse 3, that his dominion endures. His dominion, his dominion or authority, depends on which translation you're reading. His authority over all, his sovereignty. He will withstand it all. He will withstand it all. When it's all said and done, the kingdom of God is still going to be there. It's about his lordship reign is supreme. It's about him, not about us. It's about him, not about us. He wasn't elected for a two or four year term. He's going to rule forever. Forever. It's the only winning team out there. There is no other. Entities may come and go. Political parties may be set up and destroyed. Leaders installed or impeached. Countries and empires labeled superpowers and then annihilated. But the kingdom of God can never be destroyed, never be replaced, and never replicated. It is the genuine article, baby. And you need to know that. We need to know that, and we need to share that with others. And we should praise him for his passion for us. To love us unconditionally. With our best upset. <laughs> with our messed up jacket sales, with our messed up want to be right all the time <coughs> backslidden sales. Oh, you know I'm right about that. Yeah. Yes. Our messed up sales. He who knew no sin 
Pepsi. He paid the penalty for our wicked, sinful selves. Sin is sin. Can I talk to this side for a minute? We need to stop trying to categorize our sin. We think because we ain't murdering nobody, that little lie we told is okay. You know what I'm saying? That's what we think. But sin is sin when it comes to God. It's all on the same field, on the same level. But we want to categorize by sin so we can feel so such and much better about ourselves because you know we're not murdering anybody and we're not bothering nobody. We just lying, cheating, and stuff. <laughs> sin is sin. It doesn't matter what it is. It's all the same in the eyes of the Lord. That's right. yes. We try to categorize it to make us feel good about ourselves. I know I'm a broken man. I know I'm a sinful man. That's why I need Jesus. Amen. Are you hearing me? Yes. My sin is no greater than his sin. His sin is no sin greater than my sin. We all have it. We all deal with it. So let's not get on our soapbox and think that we're better than somebody else because we're not doing this or we're not doing that. Well, they're going to get this on the way home because it's the real thing. Sin is sin. And we all got it. Whether we're talking crazy out of the mouth. It's the truth anyhow. But he who had no sin became sin, paid the penalty for our wicked, sinful selves, that we might become the righteousness of Christ. Knowing that we deserve death, we know that we deserve death, but God loved us. He had a passion for us. He had a thing for us. And he said, My son, he'll take this for you and for me. So as